In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at our major severe weather outbreak and potential tornado outbreak that is going to be happening tonight, even starting maybe this afternoon, evening, but into tonight, into tomorrow, which could be the worst day and even lasting into Sunday for areas of the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. We also have other threats for similar storms. I don't really see any of them being as major as this one, but we could have other major severe weather events over the coming weeks. As the model suggests, maybe one, two, or even three more could be happening in the month of March. So a very active severe weather pattern, a lot of snowfall out west and for the north central states, and overall warmer temperatures in the east, although there is colder days in there after these cold fronts especially, so we will be diving into that as well. Let's just take a look at the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, and this will be running from the 19th through the 23rd here of March. We see the cooler than normal conditions expected in the west. We call this a negative PNA. I say this almost every single day, probably literally every single day. And that in turn causes warmth to surge up into the central and eastern states. This is the very opposite of what we saw all winter time long. The PNA, I think, is a pattern that almost every American or really anybody in North America should be familiar with. It's really underutilized for the most part. By looking at what the conditions are like in the West, you can almost perfectly predict the overall temperature pattern, at least for the central and eastern states. It's a beautiful thing. Let's take a look at the precipitation pattern during this time frame, and we do see that the southwest is going to quiet down a little bit. I've been watching the radar over the past few days. They've been having quite a bit of precipitation at times. We have seen, uh, and you know, over the coming days, they do expect some as well, but we are going to begin to see a more exclusively northwestern high precipitation area, and then for a lot of the central and eastern states. I'd hardly call these areas the central states, but it does kind of border on the central states and we can see areas of the southeast a little bit closer to normal to even below normal there but kind of negligible the 8 to 14 day temperature pattern this will be for march 21st through 27th and we do see that the cooler temperatures in the west calm down a little bit we see a much more neutral pattern where we have warmer in the southwest below normal in the northwest and then above normal in alaska here so this is indicative of a neutral PNA, but we still see these kind of positive PNA effects being predicted here across the central and the eastern states, and maybe even more intensely by this point, the 21st through the 27th. Taking a look at the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook, so for the same days, we see a similar look. Southwest is drier overall. The northwest is quite active here. And then most of, again, the central and eastern states are in this above normal precipitation category. So activity overall for these areas is going to be very, very intense throughout probably the whole month of March moving forward. Let's take a look at the past 14 days of temperatures. And this is going to be your full first 14 days of March and your full first 14 days of meteorological spring. And we could see that we have had this negative PNA in effect. It hasn't been the strongest one. It's actually been a quite weak negative PNA, but it's been enough to cause warmer temperatures throughout even the Rockies, but into the plains and Midwest and up into parts of the Ohio Valley, mid Atlantic and Northeast as well. And even parts of the Southeast, although we've had some neutral to even below normal temperatures in there, but overall it's been much warmer in the central and Eastern States and much cooler along that immediate I would call it southwestern coast especially. Let's take a look at the European model. This is where we're going to really get to see our storm break down here. I'll start us out at kind of the late afternoon, early evening, 5 p.m. We see this 976 millibar low pressure center between Kansas and Nebraska. This is the one we've been watching for about a week now. We already have some thunderstorms flaring up to the east of it for parts of Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana there. We also see some snowfall back out west from it for the Rockies, parts of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado seeing that. And we have another very vibrant storm system moving on toward the west coast by later on this afternoon as well, bringing heavy Sierra Nevada snowfall, heavy Cascade snowfall, and really, really heavy rainfall for the valleys and for the coastal areas there 
very intense look for both the west and central states by this point. And as we move more into the evening and even into overnight, this is 2 a.m. on Saturday, tomorrow, March 15th, and we see this 977 millibar low pressure center has gone ahead and moved from between Kansas and Nebraska to now between Iowa and Minnesota. So it's moving generally northeastward. The structure of this storm overall is a warm front. It is rather dry, but it is there. And then this cold front that is a little bit exceeding this storm. And we have, because of that warm front, you can imagine it kind of funnels the warmth and humidity northward towards where that warm front is. So we're seeing that take place here. This is creating a rich environment for thunderstorms to take place. And we have this colder, drier Canadian air swirling in underneath the storm and moving along that cold front. So this boundary in here is where we're seeing those storms flare up between that cold and dry and warm and humid. And it's creating this explosion of thunderstorms and severe weather across the Midwest into the deeper south. We do have a moderate risk as of now in effect for the day into the overnight. We mentioned this a lot yesterday, but these run from morning to morning. The Storm Prediction Center outlooks not from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. So it's not like based on the calendar date. It's more so based on uh, the specific day overnight into the next day. I don't know exactly why they choose to do that. Um, I, I think it's to stay a little bit more organized with specific systems because if you see severe weather throughout the day there's a good chance that a lot of that is going to last overnight so they're trying to keep it a little bit more organized but that's just how they do it it makes it a little bit confusing but you know it's whatever let's go ahead and keep going i want to take us towards the daytime on saturday and this is when we're seeing that kind of worst of it we see our primary low up here still a 978 but it's over canada now the interesting thing that along that cold front, we do see a 993 developing over Arkansas. And this is creating a new little flare up of thunderstorms underneath everything for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into Tennessee and Kentucky here. I suspect this is going to be the worst of the worst for this system. And I'm still not entirely sure we won't have a high risk for tomorrow. They keep kind of expanding that moderate risk both for today and tomorrow. So really either of them could get that upgrade if things begin to look worse. But tomorrow seems like the worst day of the whole event to me. So I would not be surprised whatsoever if we do end up getting that upgrade. Although I would not be surprised if we don't either. Regardless, that is not going to matter uh, at the end of the day. What does matter is what happens and they could be wrong. It could be a moderate risk, but it needed to be a high. It could be a high and it needed to be a moderate. So regardless of what they call for, I want you guys to prepare for this system, especially if you live in one of these hot spot areas, but really anywhere, because this is a very intense system. Treat it as if you have the highest risk possible of severe weather, because it is just a very, very serious system. And it very well could be a high-end tornado outbreak, so treat it as that. Uh, so we see that happening there. Still continued snowfall by Saturday tomorrow for a lot of the mountainous west. As we just keep going towards Sunday afternoon here on the 16th, we see these severe thunderstorms continuing on to the southeast coast. Also for parts of the mid-Atlantic, this is going to be a three-day system, and we continue to see that intense thunderstorm activity into the day tomorrow, or Sunday on the 16th, and we have continued snowfall in the northwest. We really don't end this particular system off until Monday, where it is all but said and done. Also, when we look at the jet stream here, we have a ridge across the center of the nation with a trough along the west, and now after that cold front moves through, a trough here in the east as well, which is very, very notable. As we keep going through, uh, what we end up seeing by Tuesday afternoon, this will be the 18th, is another low ending up on the east side of the Rockies. 993 there in eastern Colorado. This is continuing to bring snowfall to those Rockies, and even up into the northern plains and upper Midwest here, by Tuesday afternoon. We'll have to see if we get any sort of flare up of thunderstorms underneath of this system or to the east of it, because with this jet stream pattern, we are still primed for more severe weather, and that's going to continue for months, obviously. As you can see, it stays low precipitation through Tuesday and into Wednesday. As of current guidance, this still is about five days out, so there is time for that to change, but we don't really see much in the way of thunderstorms until perhaps Wednesday afternoon where we start to notice some stuff happening out ahead and underneath of this system, and that could be some severe weather, and at least thunderstorms trying to pop up. 
Snowfall for the Central Plains into the Upper Midwest as well to the west and north of this system. So another intense one. It's about 20 millibars weaker. So keep in mind that this isn't some sort of historic system or anything, but it is a hefty and significant storm that could bring both hefty and significant snowfall and severe weather. Definitely needs to be paid attention to. Here's as we reach towards Thursday on the 20th, we see this low does drop in pressure down to a 985. So it is really, really strong. This cold front's right about there and it's a significant one. And we have a warm front out to the north here. So again, that same funneling effect with that warmth and humidity is happening to the east of that cold front. And I would say a more intense side swipe from this cold and dry air from Canada is occurring with this low. So it is different. It's more intense in some ways, but as far as just overall intensity, it is less. But I think that there is great thunderstorm and severe weather potential with this one as well, unfortunately. And also snowfall, as you can see, for the Great Lakes, perhaps. A little doubtful for the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, but we'll have to see. This is by 8 p.m. We see it arriving for the Mid-Atlantic and uh, parts of like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. I really, really feel like this could be another thunderstorm event for all of these areas. Friday is a bit quieter, the 21st. Even Saturday, the 22nd is. We do get another thunderstorm event between the 22nd and 23rd for these areas. We I looked at the Cape. I usually don't show that. We're not going to show it today. We might kind of trickle into it over the coming days, but... That stands for convective available potential energy. And that's really going to tell you if there's really energy available for thunderstorms or not and severe weather for the most part. And we do have a lot of it around for this entire bubble that I just drew, you know, that next weekend, Saturday, the 22nd here into Sunday, the 23rd, we just see these thunderstorms flaring up and they even arrive by uh, Monday, the 24th here into a lot of the mid Atlantic and Southeast so perhaps another thunderstorm threat, even potentially a little bit of severe weather in there. There's no real parent low, so you don't have a lot of the dynamics, but thunderstorms are still very possible on their own. And I think this could be what this model is trying to trend at. We do see a low come of that eventually, and we actually do, at the end of this model run, around the 27th, enter into a warm in the west, cold in the east pattern, which is the first time I'm able to really say that for you know weeks now. We do see precipitation in the west here. Could spell an end to this new positive PNA pretty quickly, but we see that positive PNA sets up and instantly we see cold air return to the east. Again, this is something you should familiarize yourself with because it is a driving factor in our weather here in North America. This is a very cold pattern in the east, but it is happening beyond hours 240 and even beyond 300 hours. So you should seriously take it with a grain of salt because this is something that could be not even here by the next model run. So it's something we'll pay attention to. It's an interesting I idea from the model, but um, really doubtful a little bit. We do see a stronger low in Kansas again for the very, very end of the model run. And we do see a warm front developing here. I suspect that this could push northward and advance into that colder air. So this could actually uh, be what forces that cold air out. And we could see a lot more cold air funneling back to the west as a cold front tries to develop here. This could reset the pattern as we get another low very similar to the ones we've been having. Uh, but again, anything beyond hours 240 is really beginning to be a little speculative. GFS model, uh, we get the same storms. Here's that severe weather event. Really, really similar to the previous model we just looked at. We get that second one. Again, very similar to that previous model, except we get a little bit of mid-Atlantic and northeast snowfall. Again, I'm very skeptical of that. We are left with very cold air for Friday the 21st, though. So who knows? Nothing new under the sun here in the weather, but... I, I'm a little doubtful of that. We do keep going. We get some of those deep south and southeast thunderstorms here. Again, Saturday the 22nd into the 23rd. So we're almost in full agreement still by that point. We do get another low developing around the 24th, which I do believe the European model did not have. And that moves eastward, bringing thunderstorms with it to parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, maybe even the Northeast there. And then we get some cooler air again. But this GFS model just forces us right back into a warmer, humid pattern in the east. And we actually have these kind of widespread, uh, isolated or scattered thunderstorm events happening on this model as well. So this is a huge sign that we are moving into a much more uh, kind of mid-spring-like pattern or even late-spring-like pattern with these just pop-up thunderstorms happening. A little bit exciting because this is typical in the spring and summer. Um, it makes sense. This is a bit early, but uh, would be exciting to see to say the least. Looking at the total precipitation from the European model, we do see that the Northwest continues to look very, very intense as far as precipitation, and most of the East is looking 
actually a little bit wetter uh, than we had seen throughout previous model runs. So looking at the anomalies, again, Northwest looks above average here. Uh, the East looks uh, above average for the most part. And as we move forward for the first time in a while, I'm not really going to show the snowfall map. It's just a ton of snow in the mountainous West. Still decent chances for the North Central states, but I'm very doubtful of anything in the East. I guess we'll glance at it. It doesn't really matter, but this is basically the look. Uh, again, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical of pretty much everything in this area, um, but all of this looks exactly the same as yesterday. So we're still on the same idea of some snowfall happening up here and then just feet in the mountainous west. Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks. <clears throat> again, this is the day one outlook, which is for today, Friday the 14th, but it does last until the morning hours of tomorrow. So think like 6, 7 a.m. So this will be for the overnight as well. In the lighter greens, we have our general thunderstorm risk areas. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but no severe weather is expected. But I always urge you guys that anything is possible. So please continue to heed every watch warning and advisory. And if you know there's bad thunderstorms in your area, just pay attention because they could still be severe. Uh, the darker green area there is your level one marginal risk where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. The yellow area is going to be your level two slight risk. I should say level two out of five slight risk. And that is where we expect more scattered about severe weather reports to start popping up. The level three enhanced risk area is that orange. And that's where we expect things to become a little bit more widespread. And then your level four out of five moderate risk, which I've always said that name is misleading because it's not the highest risk, but it is higher uh, than medium what you would think like the middle enhanced is actually like dead in the center. So that should be medium. I don't know. I've always said that I think like enhanced would maybe be a better name for the level four and moderate would maybe be a better name for the level three. Uh, let me know what you guys think of that. I've, I've think I mentioned that last year as well. And a lot of you agreed with me, but I just feel like the, the verbiage is a little off, but regardless level four out of five, very, very high risk. And they hardly ever use the level five high risk. They reserve that for the highest highest end events possible so yeah level four is almost your your very high risk um that we do see a few times a year and we see this for iowa missouri illinois parts of indiana kentucky arkansas tennessee and even a little bit of northern mississippi mostly wind driven but there's a very elevated tornado risk as well and hail is certainly possible it's going to be a bad bad evening tonight and tomorrow like i said could be even worse where we have the same thing we have the general thunderstorm the marginal risk the slight risk the enhanced risk and the moderate risk there for louisiana mississippi alabama and the florida panhandle this is what i think has the biggest chance to see that high risk upgrade but it's not guaranteed again it, i'm 50 50 on it. it wouldn't surprise me if we stick with this or see a high risk uh, but regardless, I think that this is going to be a very, very bad tornado day as well. There will still be wind damage and maybe a little bit more of a hail risk uh, than the day prior. So back to back, very, very bad severe weather days expected. This is for Saturday into Sunday morning. And then for Sunday into a little bit of Monday morning, we do see that we still have a general thunderstorm risk area extending all the way to the Canadian border and into the Great Lakes. We have a marginal risk stretching into areas of upstate New York vermont massachusetts connecticut so this is interesting for mid-march again level one marginal risk and then we have a slight risk all the way from the florida uh panhandle the big bend all the way up through georgia south carolina north carolina virginia dc maryland delaware into southeastern pennsylvania and southern new jersey we have a slight risk level two of severe weather don't be surprised if we get an enhanced risk in here from what I've seen from the National Weather Service and Storm Prediction Center. It would likely be somewhere over South Carolina, North Carolina, and probably up into Virginia. Um, think mostly the center areas of those states would be where I would suspect the highest risk of that happening would be. Uh, but also don't be surprised if we just don't get that upgrade and this sticks at a slight risk. But just letting you guys know from what I've seen. And we don't have any extended uh, outlooks yet. So this is basically it for the severe weather for now that we can see from the Storm Prediction Center. Be sure to subscribe. We upload almost every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.